High-speed trains slicing through dense jungles, towering solar power plants rising in the middle of deserts, and billion-dollar refineries redefining energy independence. Latin America is undergoing a massive transformation, with megaprojects reshaping transportation, energy, and infrastructure. From the bustling streets of Bogota to the vast plains of Argentina, these projects promise economic growth job creation, and a new era of connectivity. But they also face engineering challenges, environmental concerns, and political hurdles. So what does it take to turn these megaprojects from blueprints into reality? And what are the real costs and benefits hidden beneath the grand visions? Let's find out. Deep in the heart of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, a colossal railway is forging its path through dense jungles and ancient Mayan ruins. The Tren Maya, stretching an impressive 1,554 kilometers, is one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in Latin America. But this isn't only about building tracks, it's about transforming the way people move across southeastern Mexico. The goal? to seamlessly link world-famous tourist hotspots like Cancun and Tulum with lesser-known towns rich in history and culture. For travelers, it means faster, more convenient journeys. For local communities, it promises new opportunities and economic growth. But what kind of trains will be speeding along these tracks? Enter the Extrapolis trains, sleek, efficient, and built for comfort. Designed with inspiration from Mayan culture, these trains sport jaguar-like patterns and cutting-edge technology. Their lightweight construction enhances energy efficiency, while their panoramic windows offer breathtaking views of the region's lush landscapes. But for all its promise, the Tren Maya hasn't come without controversy. Environmentalists argue that clearing vast stretches of jungle threatens the delicate ecosystem especially the jaguars that roam the Yucatan. Meanwhile, some local communities have pushed back against land acquisitions, fearing displacement and cultural loss. And then there are the delays. Construction setbacks have raised serious doubts about whether the project will meet its deadlines. Yet, despite the hurdles, the Mexican government remains confident. Officials argue that the railway will supercharge tourism, inject billions into the economy, and uplift rural communities. With operations already underway on some sections, the Tren Maya is racing toward completion, promising to redefine travel in Mexico's most visited region. And speaking of game changers, Mexico isn't just transforming its transportation network, it's making bold moves in the energy sector too. For years, Mexico has relied heavily on imported fuel to meet its growing energy demands. But what if it didn't have to? That's exactly what the Dos Bocas refinery in Tabasco aims to change. With a price tag of $12 billion, this massive facility will be the largest refinery in the country, processing up to 340,000 barrels of crude oil per day. The refinery's design features a full conversion configuration, allowing it to maximize gasoline and ultra-low sulfur diesel production while reducing fuel oil output. A key component is its delayed coking unit, DCU, with a capacity of 105,000 barrels per day, enabling the processing of heavy crude fractions into lighter, more valuable fuels. The Fluid Catalytic Cracker FCC unit, rated at 94,000 barrels per day, plays a crucial role in converting heavier hydrocarbons into gasoline. These advanced processing units, coupled with a hydro desulfurization system, ensure compliance with stringent emission standards. But like any massive infrastructure project, Dos Bocas hasn't been without controversy. Construction delays, ballooning costs, and environmental concerns have sparked heated debates. Critics argue that Mexico should be investing in renewable energy instead of doubling down on fossil fuels. Others question the refinery's efficiency, pointing to past government-led energy projects that failed to meet expectations. Despite the criticism, Dos Bocas represents Mexico's determination to control its own energy future. 
If successful, it could be a turning point in the country's economic and industrial development. Meanwhile, further south in Colombia, another major project is taking shape. For decades, Bogota has been trapped in traffic chaos. With over 8 million residents, the Colombian capital is one of the most congested cities in the world. Cars, buses, and motorcycles clog the streets daily, turning commutes into a frustrating ordeal. The average Bogota resident spends nearly 191 hours per year stuck in traffic, one of the worst records globally. So why has a metro system taken so long to arrive? Political disputes, funding challenges, and endless debates have kept the project stuck in limbo. Until now. After years of delays, the Bogota metro is finally becoming a reality. Spanning 23.96 kilometers, this elevated system will feature 16 stations and cost $4.3 billion. It's expected to carry up to 72,000 passengers per hour per direction, making it the single biggest public transportation project in Colombia's history. Unlike the overcrowded Transmillennial Bus Rapid Transit BRT system, which has struggled with capacity limits and inefficiency, the metro is designed to provide a smoother, faster, and more reliable mode of transportation. Each metro train will have six cars, allowing it to carry up to 1,800 passengers per trip, significantly reducing congestion on the roads. Progress is already well underway. As of early 2024, construction has reached 48% completion, with critical infrastructure such as viaducts, stations, and depots taking shape across the city. The first trains, manufactured by China's CRRC Changchun, are expected to arrive in Bogota by mid-2025 for initial testing. Once operational, the metro will slash travel times, cutting the commute from Bolsa, southwest Bogota, to the business district from 70 to 27 minutes, a reduction of nearly 50%. However, the project has faced major hurdles. Disputes between Bogota's city government and the national government over whether the metro should be elevated or underground have caused significant delays. Former Mayor Gustavo Petro strongly advocated for a fully underground metro, while the current elevated design was pushed forward due to cost and engineering constraints. Meanwhile, financial uncertainties, including funding gaps and economic pressures, have placed additional strain on the timeline. Despite these challenges, if everything stays on track, the Bogota Metro could radically transform urban transportation in Colombia's capital, finally giving the city the modern mass transit system it has needed for so long. Still underground, but this time, we've crossed borders to Argentina. Beneath the vast, windswept desert of Patagonia lies something that could change Argentina's future, one of the world's largest shale oil and gas reserves. This is Vaca Muerta, a massive formation spanning 30,000 square kilometers. The numbers are staggering. Backed by $10 billion in annual investments, oil production in Vaca Muerta has skyrocketed, quadrupling in just five years. But drilling the oil is just one piece of the puzzle. The government is racing to expand infrastructure, including a 600-kilometer pipeline to the Atlantic coast where crude can be shipped to international markets. But there's a challenge. Extracting this energy isn't easy. The process relies on hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, a method that sparked heated debates worldwide. Critics warn about water pollution, methane leaks, and the risks to communities living nearby. In Argentina, the Mapuche indigenous people have taken a stand, opposing the expansion over concerns about land rights and environmental damage. Despite these issues, investors are optimistic, with demand for natural gas rising globally. Vaca Muerta could position Argentina as an energy powerhouse, if the government can balance economic growth with environmental responsibility. While Argentina looks to its shale reserves, further west, across the Andes, another South American country is harnessing a different kind of energy, one that's clean, abundant, and limitless. In the middle of the driest desert on Earth, Chile has pulled off a stunning feat of engineering, Latin America's first solar power tower. 
But how does a country known for its copper mines become a leader in renewable energy? The answer lies in the sun-soaked expanse of the Atacama Desert. The Cerro de Minador project, a 210-megawatt hybrid solar complex, is unlike anything else in the region. It combines two technologies, photovoltaic panels and concentrated solar power, CSP, to generate clean energy around the clock. But how does it work? At its core stands a towering 250-meter structure surrounded by 10,600 heliostats, giant mirrors that track the sun and reflect its rays onto a central receiver. This intense heat is then stored in molten salt tanks, allowing the plant to keep generating electricity long after sunset. That's the magic of CSP, solar power that doesn't stop when the sun goes down. But building a project of this scale wasn't easy. The $1.4 billion undertaking ran into financial trouble, forcing a construction halt in 2016. Was this the end of Chile's solar dream? Not quite. New investors stepped in, and by 2021, Chero de Minador was officially up and running. Today, it powers over 380,000 homes and prevents 870,000 tons of CO2 emissions annually. With some of the highest solar radiation levels in the world, the Atacama Desert is the perfect testing ground for cutting-edge solar technology. Latin America is building its future, one megaproject at a time. These massive developments are about more than infrastructure. They represent economic power, sustainability, and the future of millions of people. What do you think? Are these massive megaprojects the key to Latin America's transformation? Or are the challenges too great to overcome? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more incredible stories about the world's biggest mega projects.